Hello, so today we're going to be planting asparagus. So if you've been watching my videos, you know that I went back to my older house, my former property, my former homestead, and I liberated um, a lot of a lot of plants, including I decided at the last second to dig up asparagus roots. Now, a lot of those do look like they were successful, uh, that they survived. They don't look in the best shape. I actually just went and potted those. Next, I'm moving on to some store-bought ones because I didn't. I ended up buying some more store-bought asparagus roots because I thought, well, I didn't have a lot of faith in my ability to save my multi-year uh, crowns. So I went ahead and I got those planted, but I wanted to bring you along when I planted the store-bought ones because most of you out there might be starting fresh, might be starting new with roots that were bought from the store. And when you get those little tiny shriveled up squids in the dust and like the sawdust, it, um, it can be a little, I don't know, it can be a little uh, emotional because <laughs> you look at these little shriveled up, seemingly dead roots and you're like, how are these gonna survive? How are these gonna live? So I'm going to take you along while I work on this. I wanted to say one note before I bring you out there and we get to work. I am over planting them. I'm running out of pots because I'm growing everything in containers. So I'm running out of pots and I'm running out of potting soil. So you're gonna see me plant a whole lot of crowns in one pot. The spacing is like 12 to 18 inches between. Now I'm doing contain all container gardening and high intensity planting at that. So, um, so the spacing will be a little bit off, but I just wanted to give that little caveat before we I bring you out there. So having said that, let's go out there and plant some asparagus crown. All right, so when you first get when you first pull these out of the package, they are usually, you'll notice that they're usually full of this sawdust. It's like a super dry potting mix. And that keeps the roots, the crowns, very desiccated. Look how tiny this is. Look how shriveled up it is. <laughs> now, usually when they, they package them up, they'll put like two or three or four together and they'll put uh, elastic bands, gently remove the elastic bands and take out one of the crowns. So what you're going to want to do starting out, they should be position in such a way that the bottom of the crown, all the roots are pushed down straight to the bottom of the crown. But you'll, if they're not, or if you're at all concerned, you can look for where there were previous sprouts. They look like, kind of look like itty bitty flowers, like dried up dead flowers. <laughs> That's the top of the crown. So if for some reason this came like backwards or in a weird shape that you couldn't recognize, look for those little dead flowers at the top. Hopefully the camera picks that up. Okay. Now, luckily, these were packaged in such a way that the roots are all pointing down and together. So they look like little squids, little octopi, octopuses, I believe is actually the correct term, correct pluralization. But what you're going to want to do is take this, take the crown, take the roots, and spread them out in a circular formation, gently, because these are very desiccated and they'll easily break off. It doesn't have to be perfectly out straight, but you'll want to get into shape like that. So when you put it down into the dirt, The roots are spiral spiraling out in a radial fashion, like rays of sunshine. Now, like I said, I'm going to be intensely planting these <laughs> because I am quickly running out of potting soil. So I'm going to put a whole bunch in here. I'm going to start by putting three in here just to show you and demonstrate what I'm doing. But I'll be quite honest, I'll probably go back and throw a few more in. Because that's the other thing. Um, when you're buying them from the store, there's no guarantee. There's no way to tell if this is alive. I mean, sometimes if you're lucky, like I think this one has like the little nub growing nub of a new shoot but you usually don't see that usually it's just dead <laughs> straight from the clutches of anubis They'll, they look pretty pretty destroyed so you're not going to really have a good indication if these are alive and in good condition so i always suggest that yes i'm going to overplant this but go ahead and plant these pretty close together because it's going to be a test when you're buying brand new crowns some of these are not going to be viable they're not going to be alive so it doesn't hurt to overplant them worst comes to worse if you all of them end up surviving and you have way too many clothes together you can wait until fall when they go into dormancy and dig them up and move them anywhere you want so you're not bound by where you first plant them and look at this one <laughs> this one does have like a little new sprout but all the roots are destroyed Okay, so when you get them spread out like that, oops, bumping my camera. Uh, 
uh, the joys of trying to uh, record video in the suburb. So now I'm just going to take handfuls of the potting soil and gently sprinkle it on top of the roots, the exposed roots. Um, I should add that this uh, potting soil is a pretty standard potting soil. Um, it did come with fertilizer and I added some more. I'm not suggesting you buy this brand specifically, but I did shake some of that in before I put the crowns down. Because asparagus are heavy feeders and they need a lot of nutrients to generate the, the material that they do, but also because um, I'm planting them very close together. <laughs> so, so you want to be careful not to get cover the crown. You want to get all the roots but leave the crown exposed. Now if a little bit of dirt gets on it, it's okay because I'm actually going to spray these and, and water the whole thing down. So it will be, you know, these will, the dirt will wash away off the top of the crowns, but you'll want to keep them exposed because you don't want the top of that, that crown to rot. You know, it's going to get wet, but you don't want it to rot. So you don't want all, like soil on top of it, if at all possible. Sometimes if I have a bunch of, like, when I dug up the crowns from my old homestead, I, some of them looked dead, so I just sort of like buried them, like literally buried them. <laughs> And, um, and I've seen people do that, where you just put a bunch of questionable crowns in a, in a big pile of dirt. It's actually how I was storing these, my, storing my old ones, the ones I salvaged. I just put them in a pot with a bunch of dirt, um, just to keep them moist and keep them sort of alive. But that's not a permanent solution. You shouldn't intentionally grow them like that. And that's pretty much all there is. So I'm just going to come back with a hose. I'm going to water this all down. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. So hopefully that um, clears things up and provides you some, some guidance on how to plant asparagus crowns, specifically those dried up, worthless looking things from the store. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to comment below. It's pretty straightforward, but it doesn't ha hurt to, um, to get good information on the topic. And if there's a particular technique you use, I wanna hear about it. If you're new to my channel, I would really appreciate you subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the gardening adventures. And for those of you who have been watching for quite some time, thank you for your ongoing support. And to everyone watching, thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey. Bye-bye.